So, you know, we talk about a lot of business and, and going to start businesses on, you know, the African continent, because, Hey, that's just anyone that has been there. You realize that, Hey man, this is the place to be for business. My money can go a lot further. I can hire people, way more people than I can ever hire here in America. I don't have to deal with all the red tape of America, all the racism, you know, it's the place to be. And trust me, the Chinese know that and white folks been knowing that. Now it's something that's been going on on the continent with that. So they talk about a significant portion of African venture capital deals are funded by North American investors, but American dollars in particular are among the major well-funded startups originating on the African soil. And most are led by outsiders, not native to the continent. Okay. So in addition, foreign startups, are more likely to receive investments from the world's largest firms and startups founded by black African locals. Now they said, because, and this is a problem too, we're going to get into this because African investors don't contribute the lion's share of investments available to startups on the continent. Entrepreneurs are forced to look elsewhere for cash. So they say, uh, front runners like Goldman Sachs, Stanford university, the Chan, Chan Zuckerberg initiative have historically all been likely to invest in Africa based startups and say founded by white people than founded by black Africans. Okay. So if a person's white, they can get money in the continent. Okay. And you're going to really hear how much money they can, they can really get not the amount, but really the chances of it. So they say of the 10 most well-funded African startups in 2019, eight were run by white people. So they can go to the continent and get money to run their businesses there. But a brother or sister there can't get anything. But the one thing that I want to point out, they said that, uh, African investors don't invest. See, you know, we hear the, I know a lot in the diaspora, we hear you guys should come back and invest. And, and I understand why good reading this article, I understand why, but that's sad because there's a lot of billionaires on the continent, a lot of them, and they don't even want to invest into their own people. That's wrong, man. That is wrong. You letting these people come in and get up over the, you know, over them real quick because they get money from their home countries. When you got African billionaires right there who can invest into these young people who have startups, they have a lot of tech that's going on, especially, you know, a lot of things that's happening in Nigeria right now, even East Africa as well, you know, and they don't know why they want to invest. And it, it's sad. And they say, furthermore, say a project completed in association with the Kaufman foundation found that 75% of the money raised for startup investments go to all white teams. So it's the same thing in America as it is right there in the continent, at least with startups. Now they, they talk about how the economic power of the continent is increasing. They say Nigeria and Kenya led the continent in money raised and allocated for African startups. It says the two countries raised more than 800 million worth of startup funding. Okay. That's a lot of money. As they have the 17 Kenyan startups that raised over a million dollars, only one was founded by Kenyan per people. That's sad. They say in Ghana and Uganda, they say the story is similar. They say of and local startups make only a small fraction of the nation's entrepreneur endeavors. While both countries are home to eight and six startups, it's a relatively only one startup in each nation was started by a local black African team. It said in 2017, just 10% of the funding raised for East Africa uh, startups went to local entrepreneurs. Okay, so. You know, go being there on the ground on the continent, you can kind of see some of that. But like I said, it's an opportunity. See, the opportunity and the talent that's on the continent, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters that's here and throughout the diaspora, you know, you you're trying to get there, you're trying to invest, you're trying to, you know, build. I'm telling you, you got some smart people right there. That what if you just take some money and put behind those brothers and sisters to do some things? You could be the next person and say, wow, that, that popped off. Now we making millions over here. We make, we got a billion dollar company now because see, listen, their racism make them pass up on great ideas. Okay. So that is a great opportunity for us to go there. Not only start business and we should start business and hire people, but also to invest, right? Because trust me, of course you have to make sure you invest in the right people. You have to make sure everything is solid and tight. Now I'm not saying just go throw your money anywhere. Okay. Trust me. I'm always trying to look for somewhere that I could, Hey, this is a good situation and it's going to grow into something. I feel good about it. Hey, I, that's definitely something I'd rather invest on the continent 
any day because your investment goes a lot further. Now, they also talked about that there's a lot of, listen to this, a lot of Westerners who say who can afford to take off a year or two of their life and not have income and say, and try to start something because their parents will support them. Yeah, their parents support them because of the wealth gap that was built by slavery. And say Kenyans can't even move to America without a job, yet Americans can move to Kenya legally. And say while Mzungus have benefited from the new frontier of economic opportunity and prosperity in Africa, black entrepreneurs have been left behind in many cases. It's that African entrepreneurs have described their experience in conducting business with Silicon Valley investors as condescending. And say one of them said, there's a lot of systemic issues as a black founder raising money abroad. Okay, a 28 year old Ghanaian startup founder, Jesse uh, Gonza said to the Guardian. Okay, so um, Gonza received an email from a San Francisco investor that read, sorry for asking, but you do understand that the money belongs to the company and it's not your personal fund. It's implying that he may steal the investor's contribution. So he said, if I was a Mzungu, he said, my idea would have been taken at face value, but because I'm black, I need to go the extra mile. I need to make sure my education level is right, that my product actually does what it says, um, a South African technologist uh, told a British outlet, okay? So this is the thing. Um, I look at it as an opportunity, guys. Yes, we know the racism. Of course, these people, this, this is who these people are. I'm talking about the white supremacists. That's what they're going to do. I, I can't even get mad about that. They're going to invest into their people. My thing is, on the continent, brothers and sisters, you need to be shutting them out and not allowing them to get in your countries to be doing all that. Because they're not just coming in by force. They're coming in, and I know y'all in dire straits some places are. I, I know. I know. But... At least my part, I want to go, I want to invest, I want to help out. And if they pass on a great idea, I don't want to pass on it. If we got the funds to invest, that's for sure. Hey, I'm your brother. You know, we, we family, we may be different parts of the family, but we family. So if any brother and sister is in the you know, diaspora and you definitely looking uh, to start business and invest, Hey, the continent's where it's at because there's some great ideas that they passed up due to their racism and that's a great opportunity for us. But leave me a comment, let me know what you think about the situation um, that's happening on the continent. Of course, you know, they're practicing their anti-black racism and discrimination, um, you know, these investors, but hey, that's, that's what they do, that's fine. We have to invest into our own.